Hello everyone, welcome to our service this Sunday the 24th of April 2022. I pray that you are truly blessed this morning or today as we share together the service goes out to both Adelaide and Fort Beaufort. So forgive me if I do mornings and evenings and back to front, but this is for both of you. So enjoy it as we share together today. Our call to worship is taken from Psalm 150, the last Psalm, Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His acts of power. Praise Him for His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise Him with the harp and lyre. Praise Him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise Him with strings and flute. Praise Him with the clash of cymbals. Praise Him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, as we come to worship today, um, this first Sunday after the resurrection, we're still in the buzz of the resurrection. We're still in awe of the, what transpired. And we see now, Lord, as we journey closer and closer to Pentecost, as we see the ascension coming, Lord, we just become so aware of how you reveal yourself to us. To the disciples in that time, Lord, you saw them. They saw you. For us, Lord, we see you in creation, in each other, in the image of likeness of God created in each and every one of us. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We praise you, as the hymn says. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise him whichever way you can. Just praise him. So, Lord, thank you for this opportunity um, to just get your word out there, to share it. To And I pray, Lord, that it goes out, that it does not return empty, that it touches lives, changes lives, and impacts in our lives. It changes us, Lord, moves us from our sinfulness to our holiness, helps us to find a place for repentance. A repentance, Lord, that we know comes with a statement and an acknowledgement from you that our sins are forgiven. So, Lord, speak to us today. Speak to us as we hear word and message. Speak to us as we listen, hear and see. So, Lord, bless us as we bless you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue to worship this morning as we go to our reading. John, John chapter 20, 19 to 31. John 20, 19 to 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with him. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas answered, my Lord, my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. 
just that far this morning. And we ask that the Lord bless that reading to us. <coughs> uh, it's funny when you start reading passages. <coughs> Sorry. Our thoughts just come to mind. And today's reading was no different. In fact, two thoughts or two sayings came to mind um, that summed up the passage for me. The first was a sight for sore eyes, which defined informally as a person or thing that is one that one is extremely pleased or relieved to see. Just like the disciples, they were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And the second was an eye opener. Again, informally defined as a, an event or situation that proves to be unexpectedly enlightening or something that makes you see a situation or the world differently, that makes you come to a realization or forces you to change your mind and perspective. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's rather, it's enlightening. I mean, it proves to be something so different. It changes your perspective, a startling or shocking revelation, a surprising piece of news, something that provides a sudden insight or makes something clear that was previously mysterious, a surprise, an attractive woman. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, here's the last one, an alcoholic beverage consumed first thing in the morning, which I'm sure the disciples and Thomas needed after Jesus had appeared. But seriously, um, <laughs> with the English lesson there over, I suppose, how would you respond if Jesus suddenly appeared and said, peace be with you, and then lifted his hands and showed you his hands and his feet and the wound in his side? Well, the disciples were overjoyed. Would you be? Thomas blabbers, my Lord, my God. Would you? The disciples on the road to Emmaus in Luke 24 reacted like this. Um, when he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were our hearts not burning with, within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? How would you respond? Three responses, joy, recognition, desire. Would that be our response or would, be, would we need Jesus' reassuring words? Peace be with you before our eyes were opened. Bruce Mill, and, I, and I'm just using the outline headings um, that I found on the internet, um, uses Doubting Thomas as a part of a journey of faith. And he uses four headings and four thoughts that really stimulated my brain, and I hope you enjoy them too. The first is the agony of faith, the assurance of faith, the glory of faith, and the invitation of faith. So looking at each one briefly, starting with the agony of faith. Now for me, this just speaks of us wrestling with God, wrestling with our Thomas, uh, with our words, with Thomas, uh, Thomas's words. I mean, wrestling with those words where he says, unless I see the nail marks, unless I see his hand, unless I put my finger in and my hand in his side. Um, I mean, there's no other word for agony of faith, or maybe we can say wrestling with our faith. Um, and maybe a word for that is doubt. Doubt that needs to be sincere. Not merely skepticism. There's a big difference. Doubt must be prepared to face the evidence. And there's so much of that. And it must be willing to be exposed to the test of faith. It must be willing to be exposed to the test of faith. There's a saying that goes like this. It is not Christianity that has been tried and found wanting. Rather that it has not been tried. Think on those words. It is not that Christianity has been found tried, has been tried and found wanting, rather that it has not been tried. Also, we are not alone in this. I mean, this wrestling, this agony, this, I mean, the Bible's full of doubters, full of wrestlers. I mean, yes, just a reminder of a few other than Thomas. You may even be surprised. Jacob wrestled with God. David constantly agonized with God. Just go and read the Psalms. Paul, the thorn in his side. And then the last example, Jesus himself in the Garden of Gethsemane said, Father, 
if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, your will be done. And in these last moments on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I mean, this faith journey is not a bed of roses. It's, it's hard. It's tough. But we need that because toughness grows us. Toughness shapes us. Toughness molds us. Um, so wrestle. It's good to wrestle. But remember this, and this is the next step, the assurance of faith. Three times Jesus says in our passage, peace be with you. To Thomas, he says, put your fingers here, your hand here. Check my sight. Stop doubting and believe. The hymn puts it like this. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Hair of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, born of his blood. We have an assurance of faith. Resurrection proves that. Thirdly, the glory of faith. Thomas's words, my Lord, my God. Jesus's words, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. I mean, this is the journey. This is the, the excitement of the place where we find ourselves as Christians, the place where we go, the place where we search place where we wrestle, where we find assurance, where we go again and we see the glory of God around us. Always because, and this is the fourth point, <coughs> there is an invitation of faith, an invitation to come to Jesus. Again, Jesus says to Thomas, come, put your finger here, put your hand here, um, stop doubting and believe. Isaiah 55, God says, Come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no water, money, come. Revelation 3.20, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. <clears throat> John simply says, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. In short, you may find the going tough. You may find it hard to believe. You may find it, your doubts and things. There's always, but there's always assurance. There's always glory. There's always an invitation to come and look, to come and drink, to come and see, to open the door, whatever it is, an invitation to journey closer and closer to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our God. But then again, there's more to it than that. The journey is not about us, not just about us. Let me just put it that way. It's more than that and bigger than us. God puts it before us saying that we have a mission to fulfill. Verse 21 of our reading, As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. The short version of Matthew 28, 19. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he says, follow my pattern. Follow the pattern of those who have gone before you. Jesus, the disciples, Paul, our forefathers and mothers in the faith. Because there's a story that needs to be told. A hymn says, <laughs> we know the hymn well, tell me the old, old story, tell me of Jesus and his love, tell me of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love, tell me softly and slowly, tell me the old, old story. There's a story, there's a mission, there's a purpose, there's a plan, and we don't have to do it on our own. We're not on our own. Jesus gave the Holy Spirit to the disciples when he breathed on them, saying, Receive the Holy Spirit. He gives us the same today. And he says to us today, Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive my gift. Receive the Counselor. We're going to get more on that when we get to Pentecost. We don't have to do it on our own because Jesus equips us. So in conclusion... An amazing piece of scripture. 
There's so much to go and read. I mean, I really, I challenge you again. I don't just say it because I want to say it on a Sunday. I say it because I mean it. Go and read the passage again. John 20, 19 to 31. And we'll see this picture from fear to peace, from doubt to belief, a story of joy, recognition, and desire, the journey of faith. So where does this passage find you this morning? Where does it find you in your journey of faith? Where does it find you in your skepticism, your doubt, your unbelief? Where does it find you? How does it speak to you? Because Jesus' response is simply to say, reach out, stop doubting, and believe. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, what an amazing, amazing passage. One that calls us to stop doubting and believe. One that has so many strands. Um, it's almost a, a, a story of three strands, a strong rope that cannot be broken. A story of fear and peace. A story of doubt and faith. A story of invitation a story of your grace, and a story that needs to be told. So equip us this morning, Lord, that we too may go and tell the old, old story. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. I pray that you've been blessed. Know that Jesus loves you. Go and tell the old, old story as I say to you today. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love God's world.